Well, good day, everyone, and thanks for coming back to the next video. Guys, I wanted to do a video where I was going to bring to light three different studies I've talked about in probably the past two years. They're three one-page summaries, and I'm sure you folks are familiar with these. I've gone over these many times, but I wanted to do a video where I brought all three of them together because I think this is the most critical information that we can tell our Christian friends and our um, others that we know about what the Lord is going to do when he begins his end time events. So the first one sheet summary is 12 verses that speak about the little children being taken by the Lord right as the tribulation begins. The second one page summary is how we can um, how we can examine Jeremiah 50 and 51 and determine that the United States is indeed what Jeremiah is speaking about when he talks about this nation Babylon, this last of the nations that he speaks about, that he wrote uh, 2,600 years ago. And of course, the last one-page summary is just crazy to even bring up in a Christian environment. Surely a church, no pastor in their, his right mind, his or her right mind, would even begin to speak about this. But this Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, speaks about how Satan, the ancient serpent, and his fallen angels are going to come down to the earth and wreak havoc on left behind uh, the left behind folks that are um, that are here on the earth after the man child and the woman enter into the man child's taken to the throne in heaven and the woman he would say is the second fruits are going to be protected in the wilderness so guys I want to go ahead and start with Ken Peters dream of the tribulation in his dream he said that there were no children uh, anywhere at the beginning of what his tribulation dream, how it started. Let's listen. Again, there weren't local law enforcement agencies, but it was more of a, a kind of a military or militia. It seemed like martial law. Hmm. Uh, people were greatly frightened. One thing I remember that I will never forget was um, that little babies had just uh, disappeared for a period of time in this dream. They were gone. No, no little babies from, you know, newborn. Where did they go? Where did all the babies go? They just disappeared. Uh, they were just yeah. gone. Yeah, they had just disappeared. Many, many mothers were very frightened. A lot of toddlers had disappeared. Uh, and then a period of time into the dream, uh, it, it, people began to have children again. And I knew that this was the end, even though I didn't. Okay, so if I could just offer up here an explanation. So the little ones were taken at the beginning, and then after the Antichrist uh, begins to rule the world and issues the mark of the beast, the RFID chip to tweak everyone's DNA such that we aren't actually human, not we, but those aren't actually human anymore, then they begin to have kids again. And these these are the children, the babies that are dashed against the stone that you can read about in the Bible. You can go ahead and search on that word dashed. But let's go ahead and go back to uh, my study here. Now, this information, I have done my best very politely to share this information with um, people of mine, friends of mine who are Bible folks, uh, pastors, um, th this is impossible to share with, uh, you know, churchianity Christian types. It's not that they're mean or bad people or anything like that. They just can't fathom that God will actually do what He says. And we know in the Bible, um, years ago, Jesus had the same problem. You know, He Jesus tried to tell Peter that he had to go be arrested and flogged and 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 crucified. And Peter himself got in the face of, the, of our Lord and said, said, No, that'll never happen. Of course, Jesus accused him. Of working with Satan at that time. He says, get behind me, Satan. The same thing happened on the road to Emmaus the day that Jesus rose from the dead. He showed up and was hanging out with these two guys who were walking to the road to Emmaus. That was a town in Judea. And he shielded who he was and he was speaking to them. And after he realized that uh, they were confused about the events that occurred during the crucifixion and resurrection of himself, Jesus makes the claim. He says, he says you fo oh, foolish ones, slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. See, the same problem that Jesus had back then is the same problem we have today. Christians do not want to read biblical prophecy for whatever reason. Many of it's the teachings in, in the denominational churches, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for whatever reason, they just, it's ignored. So if you read the words of Jesus, um, I'm going to speak about these, these prophecies now. We can get a picture, a full picture of how all this is going to go down. Now Jesus himself tells us that the little children, and I would classify that as those under the age of accountability, which might be seven or under, or it would be anybody, um, 
who would have people would be autistic or anyone who is uh, retarded adults who are not uh, they're not accountable for their sin and Jesus goes on to say this he says how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers and that's right in Matthew 24 when he speaks about the tribulation beginning and we see in Hosea 9 which is unfulfilled prophecy see all of Hosea the prophet Hosea was never never fulfilled you'll find no scholar that pinpoints the events of Hosea many people think that Hosea is all about the destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel because that's when Hosea wrote but if you actually take the time to read Hosea chapters 4 through 14 you'll see you won't see any events that are listed in Hosea that align with chronicles or kings that describe the destruction of the northern kingdom so Hosea is unfulfilled future prophecy and right in Hosea we see where the Lord is going to bereave he's going to take the little ones till there is none left and then God says God himself says give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts and that event which is future to occur unfulfilled as up up until now is why Jesus says how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers because God himself is going to give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts why because he's going to take the little ones until there is none left you read in Isaiah 47 unfulfilled prophecy he says um, he says this event will occur in a moment in one day the loss of children Isaiah 17 gives us a little bit more information we learned that Isaiah in chapter 17 speaks about Damascus which is the longest and oldest continuously operated city in the world it has never been destroyed so when we see it nuked we will know that the harvest will begin soon afterwards and it says here in verse 11 yet the harvest your children will flee away on a day of grief and incurable pain Ezekiel 24 gives us basically the same information it says on the day when I take away the stronghold right that would be our defense system he says your their dearest treasure I will also take away their sons and daughters Jeremiah 50 gives us basically what the plan of the Lord says he goes like this behold like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan and the Lord says for who is like me what shepherd what pastor can stand before me therefore hear the plan that the Lord has made against Babylon surely the little ones of the flock shall be torn away that word in Hebrew means drawn up removed and those left will be desolate Hosea 5 speaks about the same event unfulfilled prophecy Jeremiah 50 unfulfilled prophecy once again or it's the same euphemism the Lord will be like a lion to Ephraim the Christians and a young lion to the house of Judah that's the Jews and he will tear and go away and carry off that no one will rescue and that location is Mount Zion in heaven if you read Zechariah 8 that's when he shows up with the little ones go read Zechariah 8 that's a picture of Mount Zion in heaven Micah chapter 1 tells us the same thing it's it's as direct as you can get it he says for the children you love will be snatched away make yourself bottles of altar for your little ones have been removed from you Isaiah 49 unfulfilled prophecy it says they the angels shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders then the Lord proclaims and I will save your children it, it all makes sense when you read all these together Jeremiah chapter 10 it's right after the event occurred he says uh, the, the man says my tent is destroyed and my cords are broken my children have gone from me for they are not the Greek verb in that text is gone not killed not hacked up gone Jeremiah 31 says the same thing he says for they are no more but we learn that the Lord says your children shall come back to their own people when you read Lamentations and Lamentations was fulfilled in times past but it will be fulfilled in times future because if you look at some of the things it says it actually says that the 144,000 will be cast down to the earth that never happened before in times past so Lamentations chapters 1 through 4 will be fully fulfilled in times future you can read about that in chapter 1 and 2 about how these shiny ones are going to be cast down to the earth it goes like this for the Lord afflicted her it would be her apostate church in the modern time because of her many acts of rebellion her children went away captive before the enemy then when you go and read Lamentations chapter 2 it says the Lord actually tells us he says the Lord has become like an enemy he has swallowed up Israel 
And that wouldn't mean the Jews. It would mean Israel as Israel, as Jacob is called Israel. Ephraim and Manasseh are to carry on the name Israel, as it says in Isaiah, I'm sorry, Genesis 48. So when you take these verses all together, you can get various 12 different angles to this event that's going to occur. You learn that it's going to happen in a single day you know, after Damascus is destroyed. Right? after the stronghold is taken. And you read in Jeremiah 50, then in verse 46, that there's going to be an earthquake right as this happens too. So let me just jump to uh, Micah, because let's see Mike here. Micah chapter 1. Some people would say, well, Micah's the Old Testament. Why are we even reading Micah? Let me just jump here. So when you go to Micah, this is a summary of events I have. You guys can download this document. It's a one-pager. It's called the progression of the remnant and the four phases of how the remnant's going to be used. The remnant bride, the harvest workers. We learn in Micah chapter 1, verse 2, it goes like this. Hear you peoples, all of you. Pay attention, O earth. This is. It doesn't say Judah or Judea. It's the whole earth. Behold, for behold, the Lord is coming out of his place, and he will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. That didn't happen in times past. This is future fulfillment. And right away in Micah chapter 2, we learn that the remnant's going to be gathered, taken into heaven through the narrow gate, and their king is going to pass before them. We learn from Micah chapter 3 that this is going to happen before peace is proclaimed. Micah chapter 4, we learn about how there's going to be a reunion of a new remnant I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, in Micah chapter 4 here, we learn about how there's going to be a reunion. Uh, how the Lord's going to gather a remnant, the little ones, the innocents, at the height of Mount Zion. And then when the Assyrian comes in chapter 5, the remnant is sent back to be in the midst of many peoples. This is the progression of the remnant bride. And then the remnant bride is going to be this line that's going to tear and go away and work as harvest workers the same way that Jesus tore away in Hosea 5. Let me get back to my study. Now, guys, I've talked about this many times, about Jeremiah's prophecy. I'm not going to go through this. You guys can download this document. But when you read all these clues, you simply come away that ancient Babylon in no way fulfilled all of these. And the one that just kills me here is the fact that it's the land of images. Four times in these two chapters, it speaks about how Babylon sends its images all over the world causing the whole world to sin. And that's all the U.S. does, is we send our images out. Motion pictures, TV, porn, all of it. And you see here in Jeremiah 51, verse 13, it says, O you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. You can see a picture here. Ancient Babylon had rivers going through it. It doesn't say, O you with many rivers. It says many waters, many bodies of waters. Okay, The U.S. is surrounded by water. Then we learn in verse 42, it says, The sea, the oceans, have come upon Babylon. She's covered with tumultuous waves. You don't get tumultuous waves from little rivers going through ancient Babylon. This is speaking of future fulfillment for the United States. And, of course, you've heard about the asteroids that are predicted to come that will cause these tsunamis that will destroy the USA. It says here in verse 3, it says, For out of the north, Russia... A nation shall come up against her. It doesn't say Russia. I'm implying Russia. And Russia will make the land a desolation. So you can clearly see here by these few verses, when you just read them one by one and attempt to apply to them to see whether they really apply themselves to ancient Babylon, which they don't, and they apply completely to modern America. Okay, so the USA will become a desolation. And then lastly, I have this one-page summary on this issue, I would say, stems from the fact that the modern churches uh, want to accept flawed doctrines with, regret, with re uh, respect to prophecy. So this is one of the reasons that the, the, the denominations want to stay as far away from the book of Revelation as they can. So they've created these complicated terminologies and doctrines to confuse. They don't do it to confuse people, but the result is confusion. You go into any church, Methodist church, Catholic church, Lutheran church, Presbyterian, and you start asking simple questions about the book of Revelation, and they'll look at you like you got ten heads. 
So the issue with this one is chapters 6 through 18 in the book of Revelation to some of these churches who believe in this errant millennial theory, I'll get into that in a minute, they believe that all of this was fulfilled in 70 AD even though Revelation was written was written in 90 AD, they're somehow saying how Revelation applies to something that occurred in 70 AD, which makes no logical sense. And we learn in Revelation 12, verse 9, it says that great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth with his angels. His fallen angels were thrown down with him. These fallen angels are going to appear to be alien ETs. For in 2 Thessalonians it says, it says the coming of the lawless one, that would be uh, the Antichrist, that would be the son of this serpent here, this uh, Satan's son's son. The coming of the lawless one will be the, by the activity of Satan with all power, false signs and wonders, and with wicked deception for all those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth and be saved. Therefore God God is sending these fallen angels here. God will send them a strong delusion so that they may be able to believe what is false. I know people cringe at this idea, but how else can you interpret and apply this to our modern time? Jesus says, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead many astray, even as possible, even if possible, even the elect. So we see where this ancient nation, this ancient, I'm sorry, we see that uh, Satan himself is this, is this ancient serpent. Sorry about that, guys. And you see this ancient nation referred to in Jeremiah 5, Deuteronomy 28, and Isaiah 13. When you look at the clues from these three sets um, of verses, you can see that this ancient nation that comes from afar with a language that you do not know, with mighty warriors, which is code for uh, fallen angels or angels. They will literally eat up your sons and daughters. Deuteronomy 28, this nation from far away, same as Jeremiah 5, with a language you do not understand. It shall eat up the offspring of the cattle and the fruit of the ground. In Isaiah 13, we see this same nation, says the Lord of hosts is mustering a host for battle. They come from a distant land, from the ends of heaven. That's not from earth. The Lord and his weapons of indignation. See, God himself is sending these fallen angels after this war in heaven down to the earth for those people who refuse to believe in the truth of Jesus Christ. So guys, let's talk for a minute about why these mainline denominational churches refuse to understand and believe prophecy in the same way that we do. See, there's four views. There's four views of the millennium. Well, let, let me just jump to Revelation. <laughs> You know, I'm certain that if a sixth grade class read these verses, they would come away with a straightforward meaning. Now, we learn about the thousand year reign. This is the thousand year reign that's spoken about in Revelation 20. Okay, it's mentioned six times. It says that the Lord himself is going to reign for a thousand years on this earth after he returns in glory. And then Satan is going to be thrown into the abyss, the bottomless pit, and be held chained for a thousand years. So no, no Christian a seminarian, a PhD in doctrinal theology or whatever is going to ever say that um, Revelation 19 has been fulfilled. Because in Revelation 19, verses 11, we see the Lord coming on a white horse. Then I saw heaven opened up, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on this horse is called Faithful and True, and in the righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are aflame, his head is of many diadems, and he has his name written on it that no one knows but himself. This is Jesus coming. His clothes, he's clothed, and his robe is dipped in blood, and um, he is named the Word of God. This is Jesus himself. Right, and his his um his bride comes with him on horses that are behind him. Okay, this has not occurred yet. Okay, so Revelation 19, right? Jesus returns in glory on a white horse, and he's going to throw the he's going to throw the Antichrist, and the beast was captured, and the false prophet who were in his presence, and he had done the signs by which he deceived those who had deceived with the mark of the beast and those who worshipped the image. These two, the Antichrist and the false prophet, were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with, burns with sulfur. 
Okay, so here th this has not yet been fulfilled. Then we go right to Revelation 20, and we learn about this thousand years. And it speaks about how that, that I saw an angel coming down out of heaven. Then after the Revelation 19, I saw an angel coming down, holding in his hand a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that would be Satan, that ancient serpent. Remember Revelation 12, that ancient serpent who was thrown down to the earth? who was a devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. Okay, And when the thousand years was ended, he was loosed for a little while. And then Christ... He reigned a thousand years on this earth. I mean, how hard is this to understand? It's, it's craziness because this is what comes out of this. This, I have to say, idiotic, illogical, stupid um, theories. These four dispen the, these four theories on the millennium. Okay, obviously the one that is the most literal that takes the literal belief of Scripture dispensational premillennialism that's like a dirty word in some churches if you say to yourself so tell your friends who go to these churches that believe this there's no millennium or whatever and you, you say to them I'm a dispensational premillennialist they think you're the devil look what it says here these folks favor the method of interpretation of strict literalism which means you believe what the Word of God says so when you go back to these four views let me just show them here in a picture here so the four views are historic premillennialism, ah millennialism, which most of these frozen chosen churches believe. They don't believe in a literal millennial. They think that from since the cross occurred, they think that we've been in nothing but tribulation the whole time and that we're in the millennium now. And they say they actually have the stupidity to say that Jesus is reigning in our hearts right now. And that's the millennium. Dispensational premillennialism here. You have the cross. You have some type of rapture, departure event. The second coming of Christ. Then you have the millennium. Then you have the final judgment. And this right here follows to a T what's in the book of Revelation. Then there's something called postmillennialism that believes we're in the church age. We're going to have the tribulation. And then we're going to have the millennium. There's no departure. There's no rapture here. So I don't know how you can make this any more easier to read and just read what the thousand years is read how satan is bound in the abyss for a thousand years so let me go back this is the issue with this ah uh, millennialism they believe that jesus is reigning in our hearts and that's the millennium then they also believe that satan is bound he's currently bound in the abyss right now how can anyone think that satan is bound in the abyss with all the evil we have in the world. It is simply illogical and incorrect to even consider. Okay, I got that out, guys. I didn't mean to be nuts on you, but I just had to get that out. Okay, so right now, guys, I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to say, hey, guys, you can, you can go search this and read this yourself about these four different views on the millennium. Um, and you guys can download this document. It's right here. It's got the three summaries on it. Let me, let me just show you one. Let me spend a little bit of time and um, just let me go. Give me my, my thoughts on how I would say Revelation chapters. Let me just go to chapter six. This is when the seals begin. Okay, if you go to the, the sixth seal, it speaks about this. It says, um, it says the sky vanished like a scroll that it was being rolled up and every mountain island was removed out of its place are there any historical earthquakes that were noted in history where every single square inch on the planet literally shook like it was a worldwide earthquake there isn't any let's go to and these folks think you know th these people who, who believe this stuff that jesus is reigning in our hearts and that the um, and that Satan is bound right now in the abyss. And they somehow take Revelation uh, chapter 20. What, what, they do, what they have to do is they have to take Revelation chapter 20 and place it before Revelation 19. Even when you can read the, the simple meaning of this, it, it, Revelation 20, 19 leads into Revelation 20. It makes no sense to even consider that. Then it says, I saw an angel coming down. 
with a key to the bottomless pit. All right. Let me go back to Revelation 8. This is when the trumpets begin. Now, if we look at the trumpet judgments, we can see that the first angle, the first angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass has burned up. So, have we ever had anything in history where literally a third of the entire earth had its trees destroyed, and all the green grass on the planet burned up? I mean, there's nothing in the history books that even allude to anything like this. And this happened in 70 AD. It, it makes no sense, guys. It's just, it's, it's, it's total, utter nonsense to even consider this amillennial perspective. I, I, I'm just, it's, anyway, uh, here it is right here. If you look at amillennialism, these folks believe that no, there's no millennium, refers to the reign of Christ, and he's, he's ruling in our hearts. It's just, it's silliness. And the fact that the, you know, the, the, the people that go to these churches and don't ask these questions, it's just, it's mind-numbing for me to even comprehend it. So this, the, the way to combat this is, is to not get mired down in these complex, big, long words, doctrinal statements and all this stuff. It, you just ask the question, go to Revelation chapter 8 and say, has this, you know, this verse 7, this first in, uh, in, um, first trumpet judgment was this ever fulfilled in times past or this I have it right here in the document uh, right here, right here you know this is revelation the order of events a kind of a top overview you know was right here was this um was this revelation 12 verse 9 Right here, and that great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent who was called devil and Satan, deceiver of the whole world. The reason he was thrown, he was thrown out of the heavenly realm. And then right after it says, it says that we should rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell them. But woe to the earth and earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Who in their right mind would think that we have fallen angels walking down the street today? That's for the future. Okay, guys, I think that is it. I had a couple other documents here. Um, guys, I'm going to let you go. Please download this document. And, uh, you know, when, it, when when you have to share this information with our Christian brothers, you have to do it. Do it with a sense of love. And you're trying not to get yourself too excited when you have to just explain these, I would say, straightforward and simple observations of history and prophecy in the Bible. With that, guys, I'll let you go. Have a great day, and God bless you.